Now the spine is being lowered into the water from the wireless mast. The wireless mast carries all the interfacing electronics. There she goes, the lines now go slack. And that's the spine with some waves on it. If you look at any one joint, you're unaware of its flexing, but if you look at the group, you'll see that the whole lot must have flexed. We can represent either the right uh, elasticity for a full scale uh, materials, or we can again let joints yield if the bending moment is getting uncomfortable. And that's a long, fairly long crested front coming along and making all the joints move. We can dial up the stiffness that we want at each joint and we can measure the power that would be generated by the joints. There's a little airline which keeps, the, keeps them dry inside. That's the inside of the spine. The bending moment comes along through a waterproof bulkhead with some little rubber bellows. S strain gauge is glued to the root of, the tr of that triangular plate, measure the bending moment and send a message off to a computer which sends a command angle back to the servo motor underneath the triangular plate. If we just send out commands, the right sequence of commands to the spine, we can make it swim like a snake and it would be quite possible to have a, a long duck string swimming to station quite independently of any tugs. Um, there it is, following the swimming command. In calm water. You see the white rubber bellows there? They were one of the most difficult things that we had to do in the whole project. Matthew did it. And there's the little belt that joins the servo motor and its gearbox up to the swinging arm. We can move through about five degrees. That's the triangular torque measuring plate. You can see the T-shaped slots which concentrate the strain onto the strain gauge. That's one of the strain gauges coming into the middle of the picture there now. And there's the T-shaped slot. Two screws for safety, reliability. That's the little belt drive, tooth belt, coupled onto the triangular plate, little epicyclic gearbox. And the belt can be tightened with some eccentrics. Get the right tension. That's a view from above with some of the electronics that you need to send the message back to the computer to control the spine and, and the duck two power amplifiers inside to control the dynamometer of the joint and the dynamometer of the duck. Small waves, the duck, the, the spine is really a very nice fixed reference and for longer waves we will be able to introduce the correct amount of duck motion that we found was right for the narrow tank. Now we're looking up to the computer interface. Most of this was wired up by Fiona Donaldson, who has an extraordinarily high productivity, about four times any normal person. And that's the world's longest computer interface. That's the model connected up to a position gauge, which is a couple of very light nylon threads wrapped around spools of a, a tensioning motor with a, an optical pick-off. So we can get an absolute measure of the position of the spine, which is useful for designing the anchoring system. That's the anchoring system there, concrete block on the floor, coming up to about 45 degrees to a float, down again at 45 degrees to a sinker there, and uh, there's, the, there's the float, and there's the clump anchor. Now we've got data on the amount of angular motion you'd need for electrical down feeders. There's a strain gauge anchor at the back where you can measure the vertical and the horizontal forces on that strain gauge thing. The loop is to help us hook it out of the tank if we want to, little strain gauge bar. Now here's some rather big waves hitting the spine. You 
can see it flexing. Now that's the freak wave which thank the trawler. And you can see that spines are a lot happier than trawlers. Um, there are appendages mounted on them. We've got data on the bending moment behaviour of long compliant spines with various addition. 